Hi, and thanks for tuning in again. You know, if you're anything like me, you will have noticed that ever-evolving trend in car colours and new colours the manufacturers use to try and encourage us to buy their vehicles as opposed to somebody else's. I'm sure if you look at any car dealership, car park, or even in your own shop, you will have seen an example of these deep, vivid, very intense red colours that catch your eye, particularly in sunlight. Now, if you've never been faced with one of these repairs before, I guess the question you will have is, how am I going to repair it? What system do I use? What is my repair process? Some of our competitors choose to approach these kind of colours using a three-stage system. But to be honest with you, that doesn't always give you the right depth of colour or the intensity that you need. At Exalta, our process involves using a tinted clear layer, which gives us that real vivid, intense, deep colour that we need to produce the invisible repair. Let's take a look at the job itself. And as you can see, I have a couple of distinct areas of repair that I need to take care of. Right in the middle, of course, I've got this undamaged door, which I've just finally sanded. Now, as I have enough room here, it makes sense to use a blending technique for the repair process. Whereas on the front, I'm afraid I'm gonna to have to paint edge to edge. On the bonnet, I'm going to do this edge to edge, and I'm going to use this as an example to show you how to control mottling with the tinted clear during application. Now normally, of course, we would recommend that you measure the colour as soon as the car comes into the shop to give you enough opportunity to prepare the colour in advance. This car, however, was prepared for us by the owner, so my colleague Harold is now measuring the colour, and I'm going to let him get on with that. What I would point out, with these types of special colours, just like a three-stage, it is worth investing the time in making your spray outs up front to assess the amount of layers of tinted clear that you need to accurately match the colour. Next time you see me, I'll be in the spray booth and I will actually be producing the spray cards because it's important that as the painter, I make the spray outs up front. So we have three um, panels here. We apply um, the base coat of all three panels to hiding. And we do this because we want to ensure that we have identical application uh, later on also on the car. That's the reason why we have larger panels. You can also use an old, uh, um, car panel to do that. Okay, the base application is finished. We flash it off now and coming back with the clear once they are dry. So we are back in the spray booth. The base coat is already flashed and as you see I placed already those uh, black and gray stickers on each color card. And they are, are in particular important to check the opacity, the hiding of the tinted clear. So, Tony will start now with the application and it will guide you through. So we will apply one and a half, two coats and two and a half coats of the tinted clear. As I said before, we have to apply a different number of coats and we mark those panels with one and a half, two coats and two and a half coats of the tinted clear. Tony applied now just one coat on those two panels now we give him a flash off and then we come back with another one and a half one coat and of course here one and a half coats the clear coat is uh, adjusted as we also will adjust it later on on the car of course and make sure depending on the size of the repair that you also have a slow adjustment in order to be able to uh, merge into together, into together the, uh, the tinted and non-tinted clear. But that we also will explain later on when we do the actual repair. For the clear itself, uh, we have a number of clears, of course, and you can actually use all of them, but it makes most sense if you decide for clear, which is uh, recommended by the tech sheet to be used in one and a half or two coats in order to be flexible in the number of coats. So these black and white stickers, as I said before, they are important to check the hiding because we cannot measure the, uh, the dry film thickness here on these, on these panels and also later on not on the car. But to guide us through for the repair in particular when you have an edge-to-edge -edge repair, edge-to-edge -edge repair, then it's also we can compare how is the hiding? Are we on the, on the right side um, of our film build? Tony is applying now the next layer of the tinted clear. So as I said before, here now we apply in one operation, one and a half coat. So 
one thin coat followed directly by a full coat. Here also another one full coat. And here finally also one and a half coats to finish the two and a half coats as such. We will compare later on those three panels to each other and show you the difference that you really can see what is the influence of different film builds uh, to this tinted clear. Yeah, how it influenced the color, how it influenced the brilliance of the color, the depth and the final results because it's very important to see, to understand really what it's about. Now here are the cards I produced earlier and as Harold has already told you applying the clear in a different number of layers can have a direct influence on the colour itself and I hope that you can see that it goes from a yellowy orange tone and it increases in saturation as we get through to the one with two and a half coats of clear where it actually becomes deeper, darker, bluer, redder. I've made my choice and I'm actually going to take this one with one and a half coats which matches the car best. Finally, after all of that preparation and taking the time to produce the spray out cards up front to check the colour, I'm now ready to start spraying the car. To help you follow what I'm doing, I'm again using the arrows. Now my plan, because I have enough room available here, is I'm going to use the blender to help me. And it's not so much with capturing the overspray of the, of the base coat, which of course it will do, but it's more to help me have a nice uniform substrate here later on for a clear coat application. Remember, with the blender, if you're only doing a small repair or your repair size is limited, it's not necessary to use the blender. One other word of caution. These colors have a very coarse effect aluminum in them. And if you flick the gun around too much, you will cause a transfer of the pigment too far down the panel and you'll actually give yourself a problem. So having sprayed the blender, base coat application starts here over the repair connecting the base coat and the blender together to give me that nice uniform substrate uh, and no openness or, or coarse structure which will show through in the clear later. I will then finish with a light or effect coat coming out as far as the orange arrow. Before then moving down this car as normal in one and a half coats, applying my base coat as I go. Yeah. Finally coming round onto the bonnet itself where again it's a normal application, but to the whole panel. One thing I would say to you though at this point, don't be too surprised if you see a slight color difference where you've made the blend on the side. The base coat itself is not the color as such in this case, it is part of the color buildup and the tinted clear is there to help you get to the final position. That's a lot to take in. Let me go and grab my mask and my spray gun and it's time we got the job done. Now before I start application of the tinted clear, I'm just going to take a moment to pause and think a little bit about what I'm going to do. And for me, the important thing is to concentrate on distance to the object and overlap. And the reason is I want to avoid oversaturated or over concentrated areas, which could lead to, in the case of the hood here, mottling as an example, the formation of a stripe in the middle here, or even as I'm going down the side, banding. Right, so just as I promised you, you can see that the base coat has this slightly strange orangey light look, 
But don't be concerned about that because we're going to fix that now with a tinted clear. That's the whole reason that we use the tinted clear. With regards to tinted clear, follow the formulation given in the colour tools. And it's vitally important that when you add your clear coat additive to the clear, that you stir it immediately and thoroughly to prevent the formation of specks. Because if you get specks on the job, it's going to ruin the whole thing, believe me. With regards to adjusting the tinted clear, at the same time, adjust your untinted clear, use the same speed of adjustment, and I would always suggest using a slower adjustment. And the reason is that you want to give yourself enough time that you can bring the two together in a closed, uniform film. Take a pair of identical spray guns and you're ready to go. If you join me in a few minutes, I'll show you the process and I'm going to describe it using the arrows. So that was a little bit on the general application rules that you need to follow as you're applying the tinted clear. Now we come to the slightly more tricky part, the blending into the adjacent panel. And the first and most important thing you need to remember is you must always go beyond where you have blended the base coat. In this one and a half coat process that I'm going to use on this car, my first coat of tinted clear will come to the large red arrow before my second coat will go a little bit further to the smaller red arrow. I will then change my pot, taking my untinted clear, and I will merge the two surfaces together to give me one continuous film. I will go around the rail, and in addition to that, to help me with polishing later on, if I need it, I'm going to apply a half a coat more of untinted clear to the complete job. The other reason that I like to finish with untinted clear is on the pillar here. If I was doing a fading or a blending job, I would want to always finish with untinted clear so that I can then use directly my fade out thinner. Finally, before I start application of the tinted clear, I want to just take you back to earlier in the film where Harold was talking you through the process where I produced the spray out cards and he explained to you the importance or the influence of the different layers of tinted clear giving us the colour position. Now, as you can see, I have here a guide as to how much tinted clear I need to make the colour right. My target is to make this sticker look like this one. And if I can do that, I know that I'm going to have the right colour at the end of the job. Just one additional piece of information, guys. Avoid overlapping on panel edges where you might get a fat build-up or you might get a run. Because if you get that, it will be too dark and you'll never ever polish it away. Time I got the guns and got the job done.
Well, that's it, all done. Let's just have a quick look. Looks okay. Drying. Yep, that's pretty good. But I will just add that I did um, allow some additional drying time because of the additional layer of clear coat that I applied. Time that I remove the paper and we'll put it outside as always and check it in sunlight. Well, to be honest, I couldn't have picked a better day to show you the end result and just the depth and intensity of this color now that we finished the repair. And remember, we've shown you both a blend in technique here and we've also gone edge to edge here on the bumper. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. I'll see you again soon.